think that it's probably characteristic of all of the people in our office is that everybody had pretty broad interests. So kind of a, I don't know, a career anxiety, if you will, that could only be solved in a place that puts so many incredible things together. I think at, at one time I wanted to be an astronomer, at another time an oceanographer, uh, another time a paleontologist, um, and human medicine obviously is what uh, took me to medical school. And guess what? The space program puts that all together. Um, as an astronaut, you do Earth observation. We do ocean science. I've lived on an underwater habitat in my astronaut career. And that's along with the, uh, what, what happens to the human body in space flight, obviously very near and dear to my heart, and just doing your normal mission specialist duties uh, on the space station. So there's nothing that puts all those things that we love together better than space flight. Well, I loved it. I could sum it up that way. Uh, but I will tell you, that was my first space flight. And uh, flying out of the uh, Baikonur Cosmodrome was, was pretty special. I mean, I launched off of the same pad that launched Yuri Gagarin. That's pretty neat. I had a terrific crew. And uh, we got up there, and the first look at the station was just unbelievable. Uh, when you open the hatch and you see how big it is, and I realize that's going to be my home for the next six and a half months, that was pretty overwhelming. And it did take me a while to get used to navigating around in zero gravity and doing my work and learning to how to uh, work the timeline, work with the ground, find things, not lose things in zero gravity. Uh, I think it probably a few weeks into it, I really felt like I was hitting my stride and then I really, really enjoyed it. I can tell you that uh, as tightly attached as I am to my family, at the end of six and a half months, I didn't really want to leave. So uh, it was an incredible experience. Well, the differences between the Soyuz and the shuttle are huge. The mission statements of each vehicle are quite different. The Soyuz, I like to think of as a commuter rocket that takes three people to work, and you park it, park it for six months, and then at the end of six months, you turn the key, and it goes, and you come home. Whereas the shuttle delivers a load, a big load, to the space station. It's designed to carry those loads and up to seven people and, uh, of course, bring back large amounts of pressurized cargo as well. Both vehicles do their job very nicely, but obviously you have a very, very different uh, launch profile, a different uh, launch experience with each of them. Uh, with the Soyuz, it's all liquid boosters. It's a very, very gentle ascent. Uh, it's hard almost to know that you've even left the pad because you have the, the shaking uh, as the engines spool up and you really don't feel a difference when, when you leave the pad. And you only know that from your uh, clock, which starts with your ascent indicators. With the shuttle, there is no doubt. Uh, the main engines start about five seconds, those things kind of spool up. You feel the orbiter shake and creak and groan and uh, tilt a little bit on the launch pad. And you know it's getting ready to do something. But when those solids light, there is no question, that is the moment you have left the planet and uh, you are starting to scream towards space. So very exciting ascent on the shuttle, I would say. Now landing, I would say, is much more exciting on the Soyuz. Uh, the shuttle, of course, lands like an airplane. The, the Soyuz uh, hits the ground with a uh, parachute uh, descent. Well, the, the time went by in the blink of an eye. Uh, what I can say is that as an astronaut, you look for certain space activities that, that are just really exciting. I mean, everybody loves to do robotics and spacewalks, the docking, the rendezvous, the dynamics of flight, if you will. And 133 put a lot of those into a very short timeline. So everything that really makes space flight wonderful for an astronaut, uh, we had compressed into this 13-day flight for us. So, of course, we, we had Discovery on its final flight. We did the docking, the rendezvous, um, two spacewalks, and a lot of outfitting of that new module that we put up there, and a lot of science. We transferred cargo back and forth. So you're always busy doing something dynamic and something a little bit different every day. So it was, it was really magnificent. Well, I mean, I think a spacewalk is where the rubber meets the road for an astronaut. It's the closest you can be to the space environment, and um, it's just an amazing thing. I think all of us are glued to the windows whenever we can. We look at the, the Earth, we look at our station, and we look at the stars and whatnot, and that view is, is just incredible. Uh, but when you get outside the ship, when you are just out there in your spacesuit and you have a big wide view helmet, then it's almost overwhelming. Uh, seeing the Earth below you much more panoramically, seeing the station around you, uh, it's just amazing. Well, it, it was an incredible honor. Uh, I was assigned to this flight while I was still flying my long duration flight. So that was a shock and a surprise. I thought that the door to shuttle flights had slammed shut quite a bit before even I launched. 
So out of the blue comes this opportunity to fly on one of the few shuttle flights. Uh, I was incredibly honored for that. I landed and they said, okay, you're behind in your training schedule already, so <laughs> you better get to work. Fortunately, the crew uh, that I was training with, the 133 crew with uh, Steve Lizzie as commander and the rest, all of my classmates from the class of 2000, the crew was fantastic. And uh, I think the training flow was just a lot of fun. When we fly, even though we know it's the final mission of an orbiter, in our case, Discovery, overwhelmingly our thoughts are focused on our mission. Our job is to execute our timeline to do it as accurately and as on time as possible, and that's pretty much where your head is. We definitely were asked a few times during flight about the legacy of Discovery in the shuttle program, and, and of course we, we would turn our thoughts to that for a moment. But it's only when you successfully land, after wheels stop, that two things happen. One, you can reflect back on your mission that was successful, safely done, the vehicle was incredibly clean. But the other thing is that now you realize it's the last flight. And now you're turning the ship back into the hands of the people who've cared for her for so many years and back into this facility that's taking care of her. And that's when it really hits you that it's the final flight and you're taking this magnificent spaceship and she's being retired. So I think a lot of us started to feel the emotion at that point.